What's up YouTube, my name is Alec, this is Alec Makes Things, and in this video I am going to be reviewing this absolutely beast of a car, the incredible F1 McLaren by Lego Technic. So this is set number 42141, and I've actually had this on a shelf behind me just over there for a few weeks now, just kind of beckoning to be opened. And I'm actually really glad I got around to doing this. I've been looking forward to building this for a while now, and it was really good fun. I had an absolutely great time doing it. I think the end result is absolutely fantastic. So this is based on a real car, based on fact on the MCL 36 race car by McLaren. And obviously this is an actual Formula One race car. And I think this is a really fair and good representation of what the car looks like, both in terms of its overall design and feel and aesthetic, but it's really captured, I think, the spirit of the Formula One race car so talking brass tax this is going to set you back about 200 us dollars or about 200 australian dollars or about 200 euros oddly enough and if you live in the uk then it's going to cost you about 170 british pounds so this set has 1432 pieces and it is also only for 18 year olds and over now it seems that as far as lego is concerned an 18 plus badge basically means that the car is going to have a combination of suspension gears and differentials and this has got front and rear suspension and it's also also got a differential at the back of the car it's also 65 centimeters long which is actually really big and i don't know if you can get the scale of it quite as it is in front of me but you will actually need a reasonable amount of space to put this i think this is probably one of the biggest vehicles that they've done in terms of its overall length despite having a very low uh, profile i just want to say it does take quite a bit of time to put these videos together edit them down and get that out there for you guys so if you've enjoyed any of this or you've got anything out of it i really would appreciate it if you could hit that like button but if you are enjoying this content you want to see more like this then hit that subscribe button and you'll get kept up to date with all of my releases i do try and release one video a week so this is actually quite similar to the peugeot 9x8 in that the way that the mechanics of the suspension system work is that it transfers vertical motion to horizontal motion and so the shock absorbers sit parallel to the to the ground in this vehicle as they do in the peugeot 9x8 it's probably one of the more interesting features of this vehicle and also of the build itself and it's actually done in a slightly different way to the way it was done in the Peugeot but again just a nice unique suspension system that I thought was really nice and good fun to build. Now in terms of other highlights I love the aesthetics this is unmistakably a very sweet F1 race car and I also really love the colours on this the bright bold orange with the uh, blue panels kind of piercing through various points throughout the car. Now I think this just has really good lines and it's just got a fantastic profile as well it's very unmistakably and kind of classically Formula One uh, in, in its overall appearance I think this looks really really good and again it's just a, it's a really big piece it's not remarkably heavy but it is uh, it's a very long very low piece now the wheels on this car are probably one of my favorite features and even before i bought it i remember looking at images of this and thinking that the wheels look fantastic they've got these really nice stickers on them and they've also got some very good detailed tread three-dimensionally printed into the tires as well now unlike almost well in fact all of the other cars that i've built so far by lego this does not actually have a hand of god steering wheel on the top it is exclusively controlled by the steering wheel in the cockpit of the vehicle so it, and it's quite fiddly to actually get in there and steer these wheels it's a, it's a straight through system so the axle connects right from the, the the steering rack at the front to the steering wheel there now although this makes very little difference to me as this is essentially just a display piece that's going to be sat on my shelf forever if you are pushing the car along because there's no steering mechanism on the top and it's almost impossible to get your fingers into this to control it and certainly you wouldn't want to drag it by the steering wheel when you're moving it it does tend to veer off from one so one side or the other but as i say if you're going to have this sat on a shelf that's probably going to make no difference to you overall and this also has one of lego technics fake engines built into it i really like this i think they're really really cool little pieces and they've actually got a little cut out at the back here where you can you can actually see those pistons moving up and down that engine is connected directly to the rear differential and so essentially if either of the rear wheels are turned that will turn the crankshaft that makes the pistons go up and down in the engine now there are quite a lot of stickers on this i think there's maybe 50 plus stickers and to be honest there are some really tricky bits on this some of these panels here at the side you build them into essentially a single component and then you end up having to put five six seven stickers on them in one go and there's also other components where you've actually got two uh, one sticker that's essentially split into two and you have to align those stickers with a gap in between them as always you just really need to take your time and kind of pay attention so the box that this vehicle comes in has got kind of all the usual stuff we'd expect in it so it's got the scale one-to-one -one image of the wheel it's got uh, some information on the back of the box about the size of the vehicle 
when it's finished, which again, I think 65 centimeters, absolutely massive. It's also got a couple of shots of the actual car that this is based on and a few more shots on the rear of, uh, of, the, of the finished model itself. Now the manual for this vehicle is actually pretty good and I think like with some of these slightly more expensive vehicles they go into a little bit more depth as to you know the, the vehicle that it's based on and in this particular manual they talk about the design challenges of building this specific car as well as some of the challenges that the McLaren team face in building their actual race car itself and they also talk a little bit about Lars who's the designer uh, of this particular vehicle so there's quite a bit of information in there and there's also some really nice comparative shots as well that show uh, the set and the real car uh, and also some history on McLaren as well specifically the F1 team and there's also as always parts list in the back of the book and this has around 300 odd pages just over 300 pages of actual instructions now the build for this comes in four phases and there is an additional unlabeled bag of components which you have to draw upon in each phase i'll never really understand why they do that and why they don't just bundle those components in with a particular build phase bag like they do all of the other components but there you go the first phase of construction focuses primarily on the fake engine and the rear wheel suspension and differential system and that's pretty much it that's all you get in the first phase and the second phase sees the majority of the chassis coming together and is also the biggest phase I think out of all four of the build phases. In the third phase we lay down a majority of the fairings and panels on this vehicle. And the fourth phase really just sees us kind of building upon that and adding the finishing touches as well as the uh, wheels themselves which again are always one of my sort of favourite parts to put on the car even though it is also usually the signifier of the end of the build. A slight downside to the overall build process I feel is that the first two phases essentially contain all of the most interesting parts of the build process uh, in terms of the functions and mechanics we're going to actually have in in the finished product and so the the last two phases I felt were just not quite as interesting as the first two phases so in terms of a few of the other things I felt that I didn't particularly like about this car or that maybe let it down a little bit now this may actually be something that's quite similar to the actual Formula One car but the suspension system in this as cool as it is it has very little movement for the car hits the ground uh, there's almost no movement at all and uh, before that happens it does offer some nice resistance and it does feel okay but it's just you literally touch it and, it, and it's it's already hit the ground so very little play inside of that system another thing about this is that there are a few bits on this car which are just constantly trying to either come off or come out of alignment these fins uh, that we get on the kind of that look like kind of maybe air intakes constantly uh, being moved and there's also this bit at the back which just comes off all of the time in fact even during filming this it's come off several times when I've tried to move the vehicle. That's probably not going to be the biggest problem in the world if you're keeping it on a display shelf and I'm not suggesting that people are going to be getting this off the shelf and playing with it on a regular basis but certainly almost any time that I've moved this vehicle I've ended up knocking something or taking something off of it. There's also a few bits uh, on the side which are also a little bit prone to coming off so you have got to be careful where you pick this vehicle up from when you are moving it. Now another slightly just frustrating aspect of this and again I think it's really more a function of the nature of the vehicle that, the, that this is based on. All of the most interesting components of this are kind of hidden uh, for the most part. I mean, you, you can kind of see in a little bit to the suspension systems, but because there's no uh, hood or kind of removable panels or anything like this, most of the most interesting mechanics in this vehicle are really just covered up by uh, big uh, plastic panels once you put them on. Obviously, you can kind of see through uh, to the engine a little bit there, but unfortunately, uh, not quite so much access to it on a few of the other vehicles, obviously, that have got like a hood or a bonnet. You you can kind of pop that and see into the vehicle itself to get a little bit more of a glimpse at it and consequently there's not so many parts on this vehicle that kind of move or do anything it is just very much i think a display piece you know you build it you put it on a shelf and you leave it and you try not to touch any of the bits that are going to fall off now i would say that if you're looking to get into lego technics i wouldn't recommend this as your first or second set to be honest i think there's a lot of the build process where you're just putting bits together that just are kind of seemingly random and you don't really know what it is until much later stage where you go oh, okay that's the chassis or this is a potentially an air intake or something like that it's not that it's overly complicated I just think there's probably some other models that will maybe be better to get yourself into the whole thing rather than this it, to be your first one that being said and don't get me wrong because I really did enjoy building this I had a good time but I didn't enjoy it quite as much as say the Peugeot 9x8 although that is a slightly more expensive set and it does have a few more pieces and it was released later on as well you know so maybe it's not the fairest of comparisons but but I, I would say if you were just getting into Lego Technic, the Peugeot 9x8 would probably be a better first car than this. 
although I'd probably recommend you get one of the cheaper cars so that you can just kind of get used to it, see if you kind of enjoy it. Because these things do cost a few hundred bucks and uh, you know, if it's not something that, uh, that you enjoy enough to actually finish, you'll just end up with it kind of sat in pieces on a desk somewhere for enough time for the shame to build up for you to end up either finishing it or packing it away. So look, in summary, I would say this is, I mean, it's a fantastic looking car for sure. It's, it's a real eye catcher. The color schemes, the wheels, uh, all of the kind of fins and, and the wings on the front and the back. It's a few movable components. Obviously the engine block uh, has the moving pistons and so forth. It's got suspension. So definitely an interesting build. Um, but I think probably the end product, the, the kind of wow factor of having this on your shelf is the biggest selling point of this vehicle. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this, then hit the subscribe button. And if you've got any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.